Hey everyone, Richard Metal Fan here, bringing you guys an old school album review. And today we're going to be looking into this uh, classic album. And today is the 30th anniversary of said album. Um, this is from when this band was pretty actually good. And as you can see by the title, today we're going to be looking into Beneath the Remains by Sepultura. This is the band's third album that released on April 7th, 1989 through Roadrunner Records. Now, well, I, a lot of people probably know me. Me, I'm just a big fan of like the first six of my, uh, the first six Sepultura albums, mainly because of, of like the Caballero Brothers, Max and Igor. But it was but not after Roots. I they that's when, nah. <laughs> but yeah, just is just a really just a, like I said. So I'll just jump right to the point. Classic album, like kind of like falls in like more like the death metal metal style but also has a little bit of like thrashy elements to it um production wise it's pretty crisp like everything where it needs to be of uh, the vocal max just max cavalera just sounds brutal as ever and his guitar playing along with andreas kisser's source is pretty solid the bass playing is pretty audible from paulo low jr and i mean and the drumming i mean igor cavalera is pretty much spot on with this album like his drums is just perfect so yeah, without further ado, let's dive into this album track by track. Now the album opens up with the title track, Beneath the Remains, which it evolves from a mandatory acoustic faded intro to like a brutal lift from Andreas and Mac, joined by some fucking fast drums, courtesy of Igor. And then Max just spews out his lyrics with sardonic hate, hate, and then tops them off with a catchy as hell chorus, supported by another great riff. And there's also like a spiraling thrashy solo from Andreas. All in all, it's a really good, good song and a fine way to start this album um inner self which is probably the biggest hit to have come out of this record and it deservedly so it chugs along at a comfortable mid-pace propelled by a great thrash ripping and culminating in a monster of a chorus with some beat picking up a little to create one of the most memorable moments of the album um paulo's bass makes the wall shake and it drives the song along with a huge low end and there is a bit of a more of an atmospheric section, but is well inserted into the context of the song. And overall, in my opinion, I feel like that's the best song on this album. Um, Stronger Than Hate, which features lyrics from uh, Kelly Schaefer, Schaefer, or however the fuck you say it. It's a friend of the band and the si singer for progressive death metal band Atheist. And I feel like, once again, the lyrics sort of like deal with like frustration and pent-up hatred, and they could have been written by Max himself. And the music is like mid-to-fast tempo thrash with an excellent gang vocals in the chorus and another good solo from Andreas. And this is where the tacked-on atmosphere passages arrive, but they don't really swell the song. One of the forgotten tracks of Sepultura, but one of the more people should bother to discover. Uh... Mass hypnosis, which I mean, at first it kind of sounds a bit lame upon like when you first hear it, right? But it sort of like grows on to you afterwards. It is a crushing thrash metal track with sort of like an echo effect of, in the chorus. It gives sort of like an eerie feeling. And the lyrics, I feel like, talk about like alienation, and the listener does is by feeling the psychosis that Max is trying to convey through his words. Mm, Couple with this is like another strong performance by all four members, and you definitely have another quality track on here. Um, sarcastic existence, which I mean, I don't want to go by. This song is, eh, it's nothing really special, despite a good set of lyrics. I feel like this is where the album starts to decay a little bit. Um, but slaves to pain, which, however, it still manages to rank as a good track on here, mostly due to like the chorus and another good set of lyrics from Mac. Because the musicianship is like tight yet again, but this is slightly less memorable than those which came before it. Um, and then the next two songs are being a uh, lobotomy and hungry hunger bleh. lobotomy and hungry try saying that four, five, five, bleh, five times fast even I'm getting tongue tied right now <laughs> um, these two songs are just kind of like filler which I thought were eh, okay I guess and then then the album closes with primitive future which is a decent closing track for like the regular edition and this is another song that varies between sort of like slow and fast and it has a decent enough chorus it never even touches the first half of the album but it's definitely better than the last two songs on here um and then of course if you get this uh remaster edition it comes which i have it actually comes with some bonus tracks which it, this one is called a ahora e as vez ahora e vez do cabrera nasir which I, I never even heard of. And it also has some demo tracks or dumb tracks of Inner Self and Mass Hypnosis. 
which, eh, I mean, they're, they're nothing really that great, but, nah. but overall, Beneath the Remains by Sepultura is another good al is a good album, and just like the classic era of Sepultura. So if I would give this album a score, I'm probably going to give this a solid 8 out of 10. So yeah, that's my review of Beneath the Remains, guys. Thank you guys for watching. And also, if anybody from Atlanta t is going to the 529 bar tomorrow to see Aborted a Cryptopsy, I hope to see you all there. I know that's kind of unrelated to the actual video, but yeah, just come say hi to me. Um, so yeah, that's my review. My, my review of Beneath the Remains, guys. Thank you guys for watching. See you all in the next video. And as always, keep it metal.